These days we hear a lot about rare earth minerals, rare earth elements, or often just rare earths. These are chemical elements, metals, that are key to all the glorious modern technology that we know and love. The truth is that when it comes to rare earths, um, yes, they're very important, but there is a whole lot of hot air that is being spewed on this particular topic. For example, China is the world's biggest supplier of rare earths, and we all know what's going on economically, politically, with China, tariffs, and so on. Well, we'll just go to Ukraine, we'll just go to Greenland, and we'll just take their rare earths, right? Not even close. It's actually a whole heck of a lot more complicated than that. Hi and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus, the Tribble. Before we get into the hot air, why do we even care about rare earths? What's the big deal? We care because these specific chemical elements are super useful. They're used in high-tech gizmos like smartphones and microchips and electric car motors and batteries and even windmills. It also just so happens that rare earths are essential for the refining of petroleum. You knew big oil was going to get in there somehow. Rare earths are as abundant in earth's crust as many other common elements like copper and iron. The difference is that Usually they're actually spread out in tiny quantities amidst a whole bunch of other minerals across a very wide area. So you need to dig up a lot of minerals, then refine those minerals to extract the rare earths so that we can actually use them to build cool techie stuff. This refinement process needs one of two things. It either needs a whole lot of energy, or it requires lots and lots of chemical processes involving things like acids, that create a whole ton of pollution. Currently, China produces 70% of the world's rare earths, and they refine 85% of the globe's rare earth metals. Now, when it comes to the refinement method, China didn't choose the high energy version, they chose the high pollution version. This, of course, makes the West very happy because China gets horribly polluted and we get our iPhones and other toys. Plus, the demand for rare earths is currently skyrocketing because of the so-called green revolution. For example, in your average electric car, you need about 3 kilos or 6.6 .6 pounds of rare earth metals. In this case, specifically things like uh, neodymium magnets in the electric car motors. Uh, also, windmills, wind turbines that generate electricity. Building each one wind turbine requires 350 kgs or 770 pounds of rare earths. That's a lot. So our push for green energy is increasing demand for rare earths, while polluting other countries on the other side of the world even more. Not so green in the end. But hang on, don't other countries have rare earth deposits? Well, yeah, actually they do. Even the U.S. has rare earth deposits. But California's mountain pass mine still has lots of rare earths left. But we stopped mining them and instead started buying everything from China years and years ago. Greenland, which you may have heard in the news recently, has 4.7 billion tons of rare earth deposits, but the mining and refinement processes won't begin until next year at the very earliest. Also, Ukraine claims to have $12 trillion in rare earths, but they currently have zero facilities for extracting or refining those metals, and they also have not very much energy to speak of as their power grid is near a state of collapse, so we won't see anything from them for another 10 years at least. Many people are saying more like 20 years. And of course, Russia is sitting currently on half of the rare earths in Ukraine, so it's going to be kind of hard to extract those. But did you know that Myanmar, of all places, has the world's largest reserves of rare earths? In 2019, China supplied 90% of the 17 main rare earth metals to the whole world, and half of that came from Myanmar. Myanmar has the mines, China does the refining. But then, in 2021, Myanmar had a military coup. Not surprisingly, one coup leader had heavy business interests in the mining industry. But surely that was just a coincidence, right? Yeah, I'm sure. 
So the whole rare earth thing is a complete and total mess. We mine and refine them in other countries so that we don't have to deal with the pollution, so that we don't have to spend all the extra money on energy. We want someone else to do the dirty work and then sell it to us at super low prices. And finally, the vast reserves of rare earths available in other countries that are frequently mentioned to us, um, yeah, it's simply not practical or feasible to begin extracting and refining and using them anytime in the near future. So you can pretty much kiss those goodbye. So when it comes to rare earths and high tech, um, I'm guessing that over the next few years, it's going to be a bit of a mess. For more techie tips, see scottystech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.